Hi, I'm Beth. I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to attach a neckband to a t-shirt. A few weeks ago, over on Instagram, I did a little query in my stories asking what people have the most problems with when sewing a t-shirt. And far and away, the most common reply was that people had problems with the neckband. So in my experience, the problem comes with how big or small to make this neckband. Now you're going to want to have it smaller than the circumference of your neck hole, but how much smaller can be a little tricky to figure out and it can take some trial and error. So in this video, I'm going to go through step by step how to attach the neckband and my method for determining whether it's going to lay flat or not. Let's start sewing. So I thought it would be helpful to do a little experiment and cut some sample garments and some neck bands at different proportions to the garment. So for each of these curves, I marked off a six inch point in the curve and then cut a neck band at 100%, 90, 85, 80, and 70% of that six inches. So here, this is 100%. That means that the neck band that's sewn between those two points is also six inches. So you can see that when you try to fold your neck band to the inside, it's just too big and you get all these ripples and it just won't lay flat. Next, I tried 90% and here, this is getting closer but this part still ripples a little bit. And I have not ironed this yet, but let's just iron it and see what happens. Also, it's important to note that this fabric I'm using is about 50% stretch. So when you iron it with a little bit of steam, it's actually gonna help it lay flat. So this 90% looks a lot better once it's ironed. Let's iron our 100% too. <laughs> I mean, it's not really an experiment if we don't treat them all the same. When I was little, I used to like to do little science experiments. So this was a fun project to try these different ones. Okay, you know what? It actually kind of, it gets flat. Oh, eh, it's not quite as flat, but steam really works wonders. So after 90%, I tried 85% because usually it's somewhere between 90 and 80 that you're gonna find your sweet spot. So let's look at 85 and we'll just give it a press. All right, so that is looking good. It's smaller in the middle and we don't have wrinkles on either side. So kind of as we get to smaller and smaller percentages, we see that there are more wrinkles on the garment. And ideally, we're not going to have any wrinkles at all. So here's our example with an 80% size neck band. And that looks pretty good too. It really, I think for this fabric, anywhere from 80 to 90 would probably be okay. And 85 is probably our sweet spot. So here's a 70% size. And you can see that the garment has a lot of wrinkles in it. And it was actually really difficult to stretch the band enough to get it to even fit that curve. If you're trying to attach your neck band and it's super hard to get it to stretch and then your garment is super wrinkled, then I recommend trying a longer neck band. This was a really fun experiment to do. And if you are working with a fabric that maybe you're going to be using a lot, um, you could do a similar experiment and determine what size neck band would work best for your fabric. So here we have the shoulder seams stitched and the seam allowance is pressed towards the back of the shirt. And we also have our neck band and the short ends are stitched together and pressed to one side and then it's all pressed wrong sides together with the long edges meeting. 
Now we're going to pin this neckband to the neckline of the top and to make sure it's evenly distributed, we're going to mark the quarter points with pins on both the band and the top. So the seam in the neck band is going to be placed at the center back of the neckline. So we'll use that as our starting point and then fold it in half and place a pin at the halfway point. Then you can open it up line up that pin with the center back and then these folded edges will be the quarter points and we will mark them with a pin all right set that aside and now we're going to mark the top so to do this we're going to fold the top in half and have the fold line at the center back and at the center front so you just pick it up and you match those shoulder seams together and kind of shake it out, adjust it around until you have it folded in half and place a pin at that fold and then do the same for the front of the top. Okay, now to mark the quarter points, we're going to fold it in half again, match these two pins together, and then just line up all of these raw curved edges, keeping them pretty even until, so then we have another fold and this is the quarter point. So we'll just put a pin in here and try to only put it through one layer of the fabric. And then we can open it out. Oh yeah, we got through two layers. So we'll put it in one and then place another pin on the opposite side of the t-shirt from that pin. So let's open this up and take a look. So we have this marked in the quarter points. And sometimes if you have a much deeper scoop neck, these quarter points would be farther down on the front of your top, but because our back opening and our neck opening are pretty similar, these pins are pretty close to our shoulder seams. So now let's take our neck band and pin it to our neckline. So we have this center back seam for our neck band and we will match that to the center back point on the top and pin it down and then we can let's see yeah okay you want to make sure you have right sides together and we can pin our center fronts and then pin these side seams or not side seams but quarter points okay Last one, and you can see that the neck band is smaller than your neckline, and that is because after we stitch it, the neck band is gonna be um, flipped into the middle, so you want that middle section of the neck band to be a little bit smaller than the shape of the neckline. All right, let's go to the machine. So now we're going to baste this neck band onto the neckline and I'm using a walking foot to help feed the fabric through and I'm using a very long stitch. I'm using a 4.8 and I'm also using about a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I like to stitch with the garment side up because sometimes this curve of the neckline will kind of slip away from the edge of the neck band and it's hard to tell or it's hard to know that it's moved away from the edge until you're done stitching. So I like to keep it on top so that I can monitor it. And I like to start with one of these side quarter points um, because if you start at the center back, you have this big bump. So let's just slide this under here. And as you stitch, you're going to want to gently pull the neck band so that it matches the length of your top, but try not to pull 
or stretch your top. Only stretch the neck band. And you can just go kind of slowly. If you're having a hard time just having these two parts pinned, you could also add a pin at the eighth point. So like the quarters and then add four more in between. All right, so I'm just gently pulling and we'll just base this on being careful not to get any wrinkles. And so as I'm approaching this um, shoulder seam, I just want to make sure that that seam allowance stays towards the back of the shirt. So I'm going to use a little pin to hold it in place. Just guide it through. We'll remove this pin. Okay, so just try to line up my edges and then pull that neck band to match the length of my top. And now we're on to the last quarter. Let's get this all situated. Remember to try not to stretch your top, only your neck band. Oh, see, that's how it like tries to creep away on those curves. Now I'm going to take this over to the pressing table and uh, see if our neck band is a good fit for our neck hole. So I'm just going to give this neck band a light press and see how it's looking. So I'm kind of feeling like, like this is okay, but um, I think I might want this neck band to be a little smaller. There are these like, wrinkles right here where there's a little bit of excess. So I think I'll take this off and probably take out half an inch from the length of the neck band. And you can sometimes start to tell as you're sewing it if it feels like you're not stretching it very much. You might be able to guess, you know, if it's going to fit or not. But what you want to see is this interior circle just sits really flat. And this one is just wrinkling a little bit for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this one a little smaller and try it again. So I took off my neck band and I made it about a half an inch shorter overall. And I'm just gonna press that seam again. And then because this is stretchy fabric, I recommend giving the neckline a little bit of a press with steam to get it back to its original shape. And now I'm going to repeat the process of marking the quarter points on the neck band and the neckline and then baste it on again. So here's version two of my neck band and I think it's looking pretty good. I'm going to stick with this. I'm not seeing, um, and I haven't even pressed this yet, but. I'm not seeing like those little ripples as much as I was on the inside circumference of the neck band. So I feel good about this and I'm going to take it. Ooh, I think that's too much steam. <laughs> it's probably not good for the camera. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take this to the serger and serge this neck band to the neckline. So I like to start just somewhere kind of in the middle, usually on the back, because if you make any errors, I like to have those on the back instead of the front. <laughs> um, so just bring it in here. We're going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And to get started, you kind of want to angle it. So you're going to start at the outside edge and then go in towards your seam allowance. And you just want to be careful that you don't get any of your t-shirt caught into the knife or the stitching. So you might want to go a little bit slowly at first. 
Okay, so here we're getting close to where we originally started and we're just going to want to sew all the way past here. And you can see we're now approaching where these stitches are going to line right up with our needles and you just go a little bit farther, overlap it and then veer off and get your long tail and cut it about here. And then I like to just knot this and you can either cut this thread tail or use a needle and thread it under your serging stitches. For the final step, I'm going to top stitch this seam allowance to the top. So if we look at the inside, you can see our serged edge and this is pressed towards the garment and our neck band is on the inside of the neck opening. So I'm going to use a twin needle and I have a whole video about how to use a twin needle and I'll link to this in the show notes. So I have this all set up and I'm gonna slide my top under here. And again, I'm gonna start at the back, but just um, a little ways away from that center back. So what I like to do is just try to keep the stitching very close to this seam and right on top of the seam allowance. And then I also like to use a stitch length of about three. Okay, we're ready to start. So before I get back to my origin point of stitching, I like to try to pull those top threads to the wrong side just to keep everything a little bit cleaner. So let's see. Okay, so they're back there. I think that'll be pretty clean because um, I don't like to back stitch when using the twin needle. And we just want to try to line it up as closely as possible with that stitching and go a few past our origin point and lift the needle, lift the presser foot and then just pull it away and cut these threads. And then I like to pull all these threads to the wrong side and tie them in a knot and then clip them. So this top stitching is totally optional. You can also just leave it untop stitched or you can do a zigzag stitch to finish it. Well, I hope that you found that video helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell so you can stay up to date on all my future videos. And also let me know if you have any special requests on future sewing videos that you'd like to see. Happy sewing!